Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Stephanie Stevens Show. I am Stephanie Stevens, and I will be your host for the next 30 to 35, 40 minutes. Today on my show, we're going to be talking about mental illness. We've been talking about this for a long time now, in the last few years. And so I've reached out to a few diff few people in different um, programs and different organizations and just different people from the LGBT two-spirit pronoun community to talk about what they're going through and mainly during this pandemic time and how they're coping and um, living their everyday lives with mental illness. Now, today I invited a gentleman on. He reached out to me a few weeks ago about he was starting his own business. And, um, and I found when he was talking to me, I found that his story would be very educational and inspiring to a lot of you out there. And um, so I thought I asked him to come on and share his story with us. So today I'd like to bring on to my show, Mr. Jay New, um, and he's going to talk about being bipolar. So how are you, Jay? Good, Stephanie. How are you? I am very good. So now I know you live in Ocala, Florida. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Now, I told you before that I was from Orlando, so you know it's great to know that I think Ocala is like 70 miles from Orlando. Uh, 68, an hour and 15 minutes away. Oh, okay. Uh, I know because I used to go to Ocala every now and then. We used to go down, my father used to go down and um, to the farmer's markets. They used to have a lot of farmer markets there. Now, um, yeah. Today, I decided to have you on my show. It's because when you first talked to me um, about you were trying to start a new business and um, everything like that, and then you sort of mentioned a few things in it, and I thought that your story would be a great educational and inspiration to our audience because you mentioned the fact that you were bipolar. Can you actually tell us what that is? Well, many people know there's different forms of bipolar. I suffer from bipolar depression, which many people don't understand that just because you might see me out and about normal, what people consider normal, I really am not normally together mentally. Maybe on the outside I look fine, but my inner, what I call demons, are not in check. I go through a lot of self-doubt, self wanting to be alone. I really don't interact with a lot of people. So for me to reach out and have people in my inner circle, it's very rare. Mm -hmm. I have to really trust you to even allow you into my world because I do suffer from depression. Sometimes I don't come out around people for weeks or days at a time, sometimes not even months. Mm -hmm. so, so what is a typical day like for you? What, is, it, is it that you have a hard time? How do you function during the day? What is a typical day like for you? <laughs> well, a typical day for me is, there's no typical day for me because I don't sleep until 7 a.m. So I wake up until around either 2 or 11 a.m. And then I'm up all day. I barely leave my room. If I do leave, I get ready, take a shower, cook food for me and my, my other half. Um, and then I try to find something to occupy myself to not let myself dwell on things that bother me. I'm now at a phase where I'm learning how to cope with it instead of just trying to stay in my own head. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning that my photography business is allowing me to get out of that depression because it keeps me, instead of being in my own head, it takes me away from being depressed. Mm -hmm. It allows me to focus that self-doubt and what was me to allow me to be like okay you have 
worth in this world. Instead of feeling like I'm just another body just sitting here going through the day to day. Okay, so let me just ask a quick question. What, now I'm sure you saw a doctor or two. What oh, funny. Huh? Plenty of doctors because over the years, most of them, it, if you don't have a good psychiatrist and a good therapist, I, I tell people, I said, it's one thing to have someone prescribing you medication, mm -hmm. but you definitely need to have a therapist and a psychologist. Um, one can always give you medication, but if you're not talking it out and actually getting the therapy with it, Mm -hmm. you're not you're not going to progress in it you're you're going to keep on falling down and not being able to lift yourself up out of it and a lot of people fail to realize they work together i'm on medication and i go through therapy at the same time and i'm learning now because before i wouldn't go get help i would just stay in my own little world and then at a point i said you know what i really do need to get help mm -hmm. and i'm glad i came to that realization because i became i started becoming self-destructive hurting myself very becoming very suicidal and so i made a good point to me they said i'll dig you up and beat you again they say you have meaning on this earth, even though you don't see it and you don't feel like you do, a lot of people will miss you. And it actually stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And back then I didn't see it because I was so young. And now that I'm older, I, I do feel that I have meaning on this earth and I can reach out to other people and be like, hey, it's okay, you, you can come back from this. It's not nothing that can defeat you. If you allow it to defeat you, it will. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, Jay, I, I truly believe this because I live, come from a Christian household and you know, Florida is the Bible Belt. Um, I really believe that everyone has a purpose on this planet. Everyone has a purpose. And you sometimes, we, we might not understand what it is at the time, but as time goes on, it reveals itself for you. Very cool. Now, let's go back to the doctors. Now, what does the doctors actually say is wrong with you? Like they're, they're giving you medication for something that they say is wrong. So what is it? Okay, so... My complete diagnosis, because I have many diagnoses besides the bipolar. Mm -hmm. So my complete diagnosis is bipolar, schizoaffective, personality, anger, which I don't get this one at all, with homicidal tendencies. Mm -hmm. I don't get that one. But then when they say that, it actually has to do with remorse mm -hmm. and it's not so much that you'll go out and kill somebody but it has to do with the part of your brain where you have remorse if you hurt somebody or when you say something that would hurt somebody do you feel bad when you say it or do you feel bad after you say it me personally not so much i don't have a filter so yeah. i have go ahead no. So now it's, for me, it's like you're 40 years old now, right? So now you've decided to take charge of your life. And like you said, reach out and seek help and also occupy yourself with a new um, job or new, something that you're interested in with photography. Now, this is a good thing that you didn't wait too much longer i mean I've, because, I've been working know. over it for the last i'm gonna say i've been working on it for 15 years it just is at the point now where i've been going through therapy all my life it's just like you said doctors mm -hmm. not every doctor like when you get diagnosed all doctors don't agree with the same diagnosis mm -hmm. and 
I've seen doctors from New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Florida, and every time I go to a new one, they add a new diagnosis or they're like, oh no, you got treated for the wrong diagnosis. So it's a hit or a miss when it comes to mental health. Mm -hmm. So I'm just at the point now where I'm not just going to say, okay, that's the diagnosis and I'm going to accept it. I go for one consultation and then I go to another one. And if they're pretty much the same diagnosis, I'm like, okay, that's it for sure. Okay. Because so, with mental health, it's tricky. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you identify? I mean, I know it's, you know, in the last few years, we've had a lot of these pronouns and, and all of these different things that to try to make sure that we're politically correct. Now, we just need to understand, how do you identify? In what way? Like, you know, is now everybody wants to be identified as pansexual, bisexual, cis man, oh, no. I, transsexual. I am, I am a proud African-American gay male. Okay. Now, now that that's good, uh, you're married. Are you and your partner legally married? No, oh, but if we were in certain states, we've been together long enough that we would be legally married. <laughs> okay. Do you guys have any children? Um, not human children, but yes, we have dog, <laughs> dog children. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, unfortunately, we're in a state where they don't allow gay couples to adopt. Okay. And we're thinking about... Um, going back up north for at least five years mm -hmm. so we can adopt so we can adopt um a child and then come back to florida because i do own my property here mm -hmm. and i have family up north and we could stay up north for five years to adopt mm -hmm. because now, both now you know i love the fact that when i see gay couples and mainly when i see people of color i usually i don't even like even saying people of color i just like saying black people uh, people that look like me and the fact that they're in a healthy relationship or they're trying to just do what everyday people try to do love each other take care of each other protect each other so now i see that you're dealing with your bipolar in a sense of you're trying to have a new outlet with this photography. Yeah, um, it's amazing because my my partner, um, he's very. It's funny because he's a Scorpio. I'm a Sagittarius, and if it wasn't for him, he he's my strength. Um, he pushes me. When the days I feel down, he's like, uh-uh, no, get up. You got this. Um, he's constantly like, babe, you know you got this coming up. You need to get yourself prepared. Um, besides all the mental issues going on, I got a few physical ones. And he's like, you got this. I'm here for you. We, we can do it together. Our seventh year engagement anniversary is actually coming up the 4th of July. So it shows you we've been together a long time. Mm. And he's also bipolar. <laughs> so <Okay. laughs> his crazy with my crazy, I said, we're perfect for each other. Mm. Because we literally, we balance each other. Mm -hmm. And yeah. like you said, you balance each other. Now, do you, does he work? He works seven days. I'm, I'm blessed. He works seven days a week. Okay. He works eight to nine hours every day. Um, I couldn't okay. ask for someone better in my life. <laughs> okay. Now, the reason I ask that is because with your busy schedule and his busy schedule and the two of you going through what you're going through and trying to have a relationship because you know, we know um, same-sex couples have a lot of difficulty committing to real relationships 
when they have underlying conditions of other things. Like, you know, mo a lot of us come from our families maybe rejecting us or, 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 or they're, we're not connected to either, you know, systems that are solid, that what, what, what the world would consider solid, like family, church, uh, jobs. But now it's good to see that gay men can connect with each other, but yet still you guys are supportive of each other and you understand that you both are going through very similar circumstances and you're in a, in a, in a relationship that sometimes people don't think is serious because this is why they didn't want to give um, gay marriage the go ahead in the first place because they most of the time they just think that we're promiscuous and we like to just sleep around and 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 you understand oh no i completely understand and i agree with you um but to me what i i see that um i, I we've had that conversation and we both said the same thing um how we got together is like most gay men, how they get together. We met on an app. Mm -hmm. um, but the funny thing about it was I was in another state when I met him. And we had been talking for almost a year on the app. And when I moved down to Florida, we had lost touch for almost a year. He just disappeared off the app, no contact, no nothing. Mm -hmm. And I happened to move in the same town as him, which that had to have been the higher power up above because it was meant. Mm -hmm. It was meant to be because I went online and his profile popped up. After not seeing him for an entire year, it just popped up. And I was like, hey, where, what happened to you? He said, my mom got sick and I had a leave college and take care of her i said baby that's all you gotta say mm -hmm. <laughs> like it, it's your mama that's all you gotta say yes that's generally so i said hey well i moved to florida and um it looks like we're really close to each other it says i'm 13 miles from you he told me stop lying and i said no i'm not lying to you look at your gps we were literally 13 miles from each other. I said, how about um, I cook dinner and you come over? And he came over and we literally courted each other. And I mean court, old school courting. No kissing, no making out, no rubbing up on each other. These kids mm -hmm. today could learn some stuff. Mm -hmm. And before we even thought of having sex, we had dated for almost a year before we became intimate with each other and it built a friendship up and it built a strength within both of us. And that's why we've been mm -hmm. together almost eight years. Mm -hmm. Because now that's a that's a that's an amazing thing. The fact that you weighed it. And that's what I was after. The fact that you waited. Something gay men, gay men can't even usually wait five minutes before they're trying to kiss you or get in your underwear. Now, for the place you live in, Ocala, what kind of programs are there that are for people that might have a mental illness or bipolar? Where, like, what are there programs in your town? Okay, so we do have mental health facilities in Ocala. Do I recommend them for mental health? Hell no. They're not to me, they're not on the level of anywhere else in the nation. Um, their doctors need better training to deal with people. And also the law enforcement here needs better training in how to do deal with people with mental illness in the entire state of Florida. Um, I go to a place called Harmony United Psychiatric Health um my doctor and my therapist there are amazing because they're new and they're more open-minded um we have the centers which is central florida's um psychiatric they just push medication on people and don't really do the follow-up work that mm -hmm. needs to be done 
Um, now, now, is your medication working? Um, <laughs> my anxiety medication works. Um, my mood stabilizer, it's a hit or miss. Um, we're working on fixing that. Um, every medication has a, a time period. Mm -hmm. It will work for so long and then you might have to tweak it a little because it will work for but so long. Like I was on an antidepressant Zoloft. It worked good for three years and then it stopped working. And then with that, for most men and definitely men of color, a lot of people don't know, Zoloft kills your libido. Mm -hmm. So it basically it makes it to you and your boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, it, it really kills your sex drive. Like there is no sex drive on that medication, mm -hmm. and it it can mess up a relationship because yes. you, if your partner has a sex drive and you're like, oh, I don't want it, they will strike. Oh yeah, and Man. I was in relation, I was in relationships on that, and they were like, I'm out. <laughs> now, when you think about your family, so you know we always have an issue with how the family deals with us first in a relationship. And now, how, how does your family deal with your mental bipolar? Did they just think, oh, he'll get over it, this is a phase? Um, my family doesn't know how to handle me because, like I said, I'm, I don't have a filter. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, <laughs> the way they dish it out, I give it back to them 10 times fold and they don't like it because I'm the one that I won't take it from anyone, mm -hmm. especially not them. Like my mo people look at me and my mother and they go, oh my God, you talk to your mother that way. And my mom told me a long time ago, I won't have it any other way. Mm -hmm. She said, if I, if I do you wrong, and she's like, if you feel some type of way, she's like, give it right, give it back to me. She's like, I'm old enough to know better. And we, we've gone at it. But she also told me, she said, I forget sometimes that you're not a little child anymore and you're a grown man. And she said, you're the one that's my caregiver and you're the one that's always here for me. Mm -hmm. So now, she said... Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, when you, you, I understand the family dynamics. Now, you said there were two places that you used to visit that were in your hometown there, Ocala, that you go for help. Do you, rec you, like you said, you wouldn't recommend any of those. What would you recommend the people in Florida, people watching this, people in Florida that need immediate help with feeling maybe they're different, or they're bipolar, or they just have some mental concern. What do you? What? What do you? Who do you think they should reach out to? Um, in most areas, because like I said, I'm only in Ocala, but I know Harmony United. They do have really good doctors and therapists. They are in Gainesville. They're in Ocala. They're in Summerfield. Um. Central Florida. I don't know if they have one in Orlando, but I know there is um, a really good one out in Tampa. I don't know the name of it, but I can ask a friend because he was actually down there and they actually have cottages at that one where you actually, they put you up in basically your own little house and you go to therapy every day, but you have your own space which is also a part of healing mentally because when you're in a facility with a lot of other people dealing with their own mental illness, it affects you and affects the way your own mental illness is. And people don't realize that when you have other people skitzing out and you have schizophrenia or you're dealing with your own mental health, being around a bunch of people with mental health issues and you're trying to deal with your own, it don't work. It doesn't work. 
So now you're focusing on your photography. It's a new job, something that you that, that, that you want to that you want to do. What, what is that all about? And how does that, like you said, it helps you with your bipolar? It calms me and it basically keeps me from, one, it makes me have to be neater because with being bipolar, sometimes you get in that phase where you don't want to clean, do anything, your whole life can be turned upside down. Mm -hmm. One thing I do like about being bipolar, I don't forget about anything where I put something, if you come in here and move something, I'll know it because I'm, I know where everything is, even if the room is hit by a hurricane. <laughs> I know where it was. You can't tell me it wasn't there. It was right there for the last six months. It was there. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's keeping me where now I'm scheduling things the way I'm supposed to schedule it. I'm actually keeping notes of everything. I'm, I'm actually now putting my life in an order where it's more manageable and make it, controlling my illness and not allowing my illness to control me. Okay. And it can be done. It takes a lot of focus and I have my bad days and I have my good days, but now I'm having more good days than bad days because I'm doing the steps that I need to do. And it's a progress. That's smart. You know, you just said the perfect the perfect thing. You're you take your medication, you're staying focused, and you're putting your time and effort, something that, that you your passion into something that you care about, and it's helping with making things a little bit easier for you um, with this new job in photography. Now you seem to care a lot about that. So how in, so is this a is this a full time job? Is this how you plan on making a living? Um, this offsets, I am on full disability. I am fully disabled. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to do what my degree is in. I actually have a degree in culinary arts mm -hmm. and I now decided I've been doing photography actually since 2003. Um, I stopped doing it when my depression started getting bad. I just put everything on hold. Um, when I got with him, I was fooling around one day. I went to a nightclub and I just started taking photos. And I started editing them and I started posting and people were like, oh, you do really good photos. I was like, yeah, I'm a photographer, but I just stopped doing it. And people were like, oh, you should get back into it. And I thought about it one night. I said, I really do do good work. And I was like, maybe I should. I was like, I can't go back to a normal nine to five. Mm -hmm. And I was like, the extra income does help. And I was like, okay. I, and I, I have a computer. I have all my equipment. My partner, when I have to go out on photo shoots, he takes off of his job. And he's able, thank God he's able to. And he goes with me with all my equipment. And we go do photo shoots, come back. My turnaround time is great because I don't work. Okay. <laughs> so I can dedicate all my time to my client stuff and mm -hmm. it, it works out. It, it actually works out for us. So I'm blessed in that fact that I have that freedom and I have some great customers that allow me to have freedom in what I do. And some of my clients, they want specific things, which mm -hmm. I appreciate because they have an idea of what they want. And I love that when they know what they want, it's great. <laughs> it is great when you know what you want in life, period. Now, how important is it, or how important was it for you to reach out? How important is it for people to reach out and understand that there is help for them? It's very important because um, definitely in the youth, um, not only in the youth, but anyone at any age, if you're feeling... <clears throat> like there's nowhere to turn there is always somewhere to turn to get help um don't ever feel that you don't have any self-worth um take it from someone that knows um that feeling of self-doubt that feeling of not having self-worth 
it's always going to be there, but you do have self-worth and you are here for a reason. If it's because of drugs, if it's because of family, someone bullying you, know there is someone you can always go to. It might not even be someone that you expect. It can be someone totally off the radar that you would least expect to be there for you, but they could be your saving grace. A lot of people fail to realize a kind word sometimes goes a long way. Oh, yes. I know. Mm -hmm. When you, you see know. someone that is looking like there's something wrong, don't just walk by them and don't say nothing. And that's the biggest thing I can tell people because those are the people that are really going through something. And a majority of the time, the next day, those are the people that will not be here because those are the people that commit suicide. Mm -hmm. real, real story. It's true. You know, it's, it's, it's great. I say this, I used to say that all the time. You walk by somebody and you see their suffering and whether or not you can do a conversation or you can give them a quarter or a dollar or whatever, we're human beings. And sometimes people sitting on the street might need that, that reach out. They might need you to say hello. Here's a quarter, here's a dime, here's a pamphlet of a place you can go to get food and get some help. Here's a place for you to just be able to reach out for whatever you're going through. And, you know, people use these programs. And in Canada, I have realized that a lot of the people, Canada is very good for resources. And a lot of people here reach out. And we have, we have a lot of people that are homeless and just like any other country. And we have a lot of people going through mental stuff just like any other country. But for some reason, the people in Canada do a lot of hands-on programs. They go into the communities constantly to make sure you need something. And they and the program people go to the people constantly on the street with clothes, with food, with with reach out, just stuff that they can that they that they might need to let them know that there's somebody there that can help them. You know, it was great talking to you, Jay New. You know, I mean, I know we could talk all day about this, but if you have one, I want to wrap it up. If you have one set of advice for people that are dealing with mental illness and especially being bipolar and might not quite understand what they're going through, what's your advice to people that are just from our community or just any community, LG, and especially the LGBT two-spirit pronoun community, um, because we are ignored so much of the time because they just think that we're being um, um, too fabulous a lot of the time. Extra. Of the time. Yeah. Extra. yeah. So what's your advice to sort of reach out to people? If you're in the United States, you can always dial six, uh, pound 611. It's the information number in the United States. You can ask them for any local mental health uh, facility mm -hmm. or any, mm -hmm. er, anyone in your area that actually has mental health. Um, the Trevor Project also, they have people in the community always for the suicide hotline. Um, and just know like there are people that care, even other people with mental illness. Um, there are support groups out there that people with the same thing you're going through, there are people in your community that care about you. Even if you feel like there's no one that does care, we do care. And we're here to support you. Where where the LGBT community, you have not ever met a gay person that doesn't love unconditionally. And not to be religious or anything, but Jesus loved unconditionally. And that's one thing gay people do. And it was naturally in us. We love unconditionally. So I look at gay people as a little bit of God's little extra special something because we love unconditionally. Even when someone hurts us horribly, we still love. True. We, so true. 
we might tell you off, but we still love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jay New. That was an amazing conversation. Thank you for filling us in on what your your story, your journey about um, uh, mental illness and being bipolar, and just the enlightenment of the fact that you're that you want people to understand that take your medicine, reach out to these programs that are everywhere for you. Um, also, just involve yourself in groups or programs that can sort of put your mind at ease and find some find a passion that you love, something that you love doing. And get a hobby. Get a hobby and, and, and just try to be, you know, just be you. But remember, people care about you. And there's always some help. So thank you so much, Jay New, for coming on the Stephanie Stevens Show today. Thank you, I Stephanie. It. You're an amazing guy. You made me look beautiful. As you see, I have it in the background. And you know, a queen loves being beautiful. So I just want to say um, congratulations. Wait, you got it made you. already? I made this already. I got the t-shirts coming soon. Yes, ma'am. I don't play. <laughs> I don't play. Yes, man. I got the t-shirts coming soon. So oh, thank you, baby. And I'll send you, I'll send you one. You just tell me. We'll talk, we'll talk after the show. Okay. Um, so I just want to say thank you guys so much for tuning into the Stephanie Stevens show. Today we had Mr. Jay New, photographer, and um he's was going through um a, some mental illness issues with bipolar um and just a lot of just different things. And he had a very enlightening story for us today. Um, and I just want to say thank you, sir, and you have a good night. You too, darling. All right. Bye-bye.